in the College of Business, we use what's called a teacher scholar Hi, model. Uh, the, the faculty of that we Madison recruit University and that choices. we have here in the I'm College really of Business are all experience. primarily focused on teaching undergraduate students and that is very unique. The focus on the student at JMU, I have not seen it anywhere else. Uh, everyone from professors to, uh, to staff to the whole setting of the university is geared towards the student and geared towards the success of the student. Some of the professors at JMU are just very amazing. Um, being able to give me projects that um, challenged me and opened my eyes to new things got me to the point that I'm at today, which helped me discover a lot of my passions. They definitely want to make sure that their students succeed and they also want to get to know you on a personal level, um, you know, beyond the classroom. So professors are really, they're very open and they're very approachable. Having those student interactions, that's why I'm here at James Madison University, whether it's in my role as a um, professor or as an associate dean. Those interactions and that experience with them is, is something that makes me happy to come to work every day. of Business at James Madison University. Welcome to our Choices event. Uh, welcome back to those of you who uh, tuned in at noon today. Um, I really wish that uh, you could be here with us in Harrisonburg in person. It has just been the most spectacular spring day, uh, but we look forward to uh, seeing you in Harrisonburg in the very near future. Uh, I have a, a group of uh, great panelists with me today. Uh, to answer your questions. And uh, so let me go ahead and start introducing folks. Uh, first of all, we have um, Dr. Teresa Clark. Teresa? Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm very pleased to be representing the faculty voice tonight. I'm a professor of marketing and also the academic unit head for the Department of Marketing. I've been at JMU since 2001, and I'm a native of Pennsylvania, but consider myself to be a Virginian now that I've lived here for 25 years. And I'm humbled and honored to represent all of the faculty in the College of Business this evening. If there are any questions that I'm unable to answer, we will definitely connect you with someone within our college who will be able to help you. Great, thank you so much, Teresa. Uh, next, we have Samantha Collier. Sam? Hi everyone, welcome to JMU virtually. My name is Sam Collier. I'm the Director of the Office of Professional Development and Engagement here at the College of Business. And I am, am responsible for ensuring that our students are professionally and career ready when they graduate from JMU. Um, I grew up outside the New York area, so shout out to those Northeasterners and Mid-Atlantic people who are on, the call, who are on our um, visiting with us tonight. And um, we'll look, look forward to chatting with you more later. Great, thanks Sam. Uh, next, we have Michelle Duncan. Michelle? Great. Hello. Good evening. I'm the director of the Academic Success Center here in the College of Business. And tonight, I'm representing all of the advisors in the ASC and welcoming you to JMU. The ASC is a centralized advising center for business majors. We're very unique at JMU. We're the only centralized center for academic advising at JMU, and we provide many resources and programming to help you be academically successful. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot, Michelle. And then we have two students joining us. Um, first of all, we've got um, Austin Jones. Uh, Austin? Hi, I'm really happy to be representing uh, the COB students on this panel. I'm a senior from Blacksburg, Virginia. Um, during my time at JMU, I studied quantitative economics and statistics. Um, I was involved with a number of clubs, including the Student Advisory Council, and I've done a couple jobs on campus, um, one being tutoring them. Great. Thanks, Austin. And then um, last but not least, we've got Emily Jacob joining us. Hello, my name is Emily Jacob, and I'm a junior business management major um, with concentrations in consulting and HR. I'm really excited to be here and to answer your questions. Um, like Austin, I'm a part of the Student Advisory Council as well as a few other College of Business organizations. Um, so if you have any questions about that, I'd be eager to answer them. Great, great. Well, let's go ahead and kick, off, kick things off with a um, question. Uh, this one goes to um, Teresa Clark. Um, uh, 
someone asks, uh, what do I need to be successful in the College of Business? Any pointers? Yeah, that's a great question. And obviously, we want all of our students to be successful. So I'll give you um, some advice that I, I often give to some of my students. First off, make sure that you prioritize your academics. The number one reason why you are coming to college is to get a degree. So you want to strive and make great grades. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to shoot for the dean's list every semester, but you do want to try and get the best grades that you can, especially the courses that are in your major. Also, I recommend that you pay really, really close attention to all of the marketing communications that we send your way once you become a student here at JNU. The primary way that we tend to communicate with you is through email, but we also make class announcements. We um, put announcements and information in social media. We also use our course management system, which presently is Canvas. But email is the one that you want to look out for. And the reason I recommend that is because our College of Business at JMU has so many exceptional opportunities. And I'll defer to my colleague Sam here in a few minutes so she can maybe elaborate on that a little bit further. But you want to pay attention to what's coming your way in terms of opportunities and then, of course, go after them. Um, another bit of advice that I'd like to give is try and join at least one College of Business student organization. And we have many, several for each major. And it's a great way to learn about your discipline. It's even a nice way to learn about a different discipline. So let's say that you are majoring in one uh, say you're majoring in marketing, but you want to learn about CIS, you can major in marketing, but maybe join a CIS club. So it's a really nice way to broaden your interest. You could build your network. Um, you can learn experiences that you get outside of class. And the sooner you join those organizations, particularly as a freshman or a sophomore, the sooner you'll be set up for a leadership position. And with that leadership position, um, you end up having lots more opportunities. And then finally, um, my last bit of advice is to try and get to know your professors because the more that we could learn about you, the more that we could help uh, meet your needs. So don't be shy about reaching out to us. Great. Sam, do you want to add a little bit to that? Sure, Teresa. We have lots of um, extracurricular, co-curricular activities that you can do outside the classroom that are going to prepare you to be successful once you graduate from JMU. For example, Emily Jacob, who is with us here tonight, traveled with me to Washington, D.C. in January to visit um, seven companies and learn about careers that she could potentially pursue in the Washington, D.C. metro area. We offer trips to Washington, D.C., Richmond, New York City. We have thousands of alums all over the country who are ready and waiting to help JMU students be successful. Some of them hire our students. Some of them um, act as mentors for our students. Some come back and give presentations on campus. All of these opportunities are things that you will be able to experience in the College of Business at JMU. Great, thanks, Sam. Okay, I've got some questions coming in um, from, let's see, we've got one from Rachel. And um, she wanted to know, um, hold on just a second, <laughs> uh, if, uh, how does double majoring work in the College of Business? Is that possible to do? Let me um, get Michelle to chime in on this one. Sure, that is a very common question. Uh, right now, we probably only have about 10% of our students who will double major. And it is possible to double major with two majors within the College of Business. Um, a common pairing could be accounting and computer information systems. Um, the difference is roughly about 20 credit hours. So if you're coming in with AP and dual enrollment credit, um, that is very helpful for keeping you on a four-year graduation track if you would like to uh, double major within the College of Business. Um, both of those majors that I mentioned are both pursuing the same degree. And so that's what makes it possible if you are coming in with some AP dual enrollment credit or if you take advantage of a JMU summer school. Great, and actually this, this next question is probably um, best answered by you too, uh, uh, Michelle. Um, the question states, uh, do I have to apply specifically to the School of Business or can I just apply to JMU as a whole but still have access to the College of Business? Right, 
Well, you've been admitted to uh, JMU, um, already admitted to JMU, and you declare your major when you come to orientation, summer orientation. And if you declare any major in the College of Business, you are eligible to take our lower level business courses. Um, many of our lower level business courses are open to all majors at JMU. So if you're still in that explore, uh, exploration stage, um, and it's still possible to take some of our, our, our business courses. Um, to progress in the College of Business, you need to complete uh, nine core classes, um, business core classes with a 2.7 in those business core classes to take our junior and se senior level classes. Great, thanks. Okay, um, this one I'm gonna just put out to whoever would like to answer it uh, from Lucan on YouTube. Uh, what majors and minors would set me up to create my own business one day? So who would like to, to talk about that? I'll, I'll get us started on that one. I, I think there are two really good options. One is that you major in management and focus in on the entrepreneurship entrepreneurship track or concentration that they have. And then the second option may be to think about what is that business that you're trying to create? What field is it in? So for example, let's say it's music. You may want to major in music and then pursue a minor in entrepreneurship. But either way, I think entrepreneurship is a really good way to go. That's great. Yes, and I, I will point out that um, our Gillum Center for Entrepreneurship on campus is open to students from anywhere on the you know on campus um, in any major and you can get involved in entrepreneurship either through the minor or through the management major or just by getting involved in the center okay very good all right um let's see what else have we have we got coming in here i've gotten a little bit behind on the questions um, but keep them coming all right um let's see Oh, what is the typical size of College of Business classes? Um, Teresa, why don't we go back to you on that one? Sure, my understanding is that the average size of a typical College of Business class is around 28, and we have a um, student-faculty ratio of 16 to one. Okay, very good. Um, all right, we've got a question from Caitlin saying, uh, is there overlap between the lower level business courses and general edu education requirements? Um, Emily, um, you have taken those kinds of classes. Do you wanna take a, take a stab at this one? Yeah, so I feel like Michelle might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but as I remember it, taking Calc as a freshman, that is part of your lower level BBA core. That is also a general education requirement as well as the economics classes. So that's a great overlap that you get to take one class and get two um, requirements out of the way. Are those the only ones? Yeah, I think Macro macroeconomics okay. and calculus. Yeah, yeah, good class. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, um, and um, while uh, Emily, while I've got you on, um, there's a question from Paris. It says, uh, what are the typical classes that a freshman um, in uh, who's a business major will take what does yeah good question that? paris um so like i said you'll take calculus and you'll also take two economics classes so micro and macro as well as accounting classes um i'm blanking on on some others i feel like it's been a long time but they're great i think professors especially for um, freshmen are really intentional about setting you up to prepare well um, and so they are challenging to come into, but you can adjust really well if you just kind of put your head down and work hard in classes, but they're good classes. Very good. Um, I will um, interject a little something there. Um, usually you'll, you'll be taking five classes each semester and in your freshman year, um, two of those classes will be college of business classes and three of them will be general education classes. Uh, and that way you'll complete the, um, the BBA core in um, four semesters. Okay, um, I've got a question from Jared. It says, uh, what summer opportunities are available to take advantage of in the College of Business? Okay, um, well, I'm, I'm gonna kind of steal this one a little bit because I happen to uh, uh, think really highly of our uh, study abroad opportunities. So summer is a great time 
uh, to take advantage of one of the study abroad programs that's offered by JMU. Some of them are specific to the College of Business. A lot of them um, will fulfill general education requirements. So that's a, that's a great thing uh, to do. Uh, we've got about 80, um, you, in, most, in, a, in a normal summer, we will have 80 uh, study abroad uh, trips going. Uh, some of the College of Business opportunities, we have a whole semester long program um, in Antwerp, Belgium, that's offered in the summer as well as the fall and the spring, um, that's just for College of Business students. Uh, and then we have um, a six week uh, uh, supply chain management program in Panama and Colombia. We usually have a computer information systems trip and a business law trip to Europe. And uh, we have a computer information systems business analytics program in China. Uh, so those are great opportunities. We also do have summer courses. Um, uh, most students at some point while they're JMU students um, will take advantage of what we call um, uh, May term. Um, and uh, it's, it's a great four week um, opportunity to, um, to kind of dive deeply into one class um, uh, and uh, complete it in four weeks time. So lots of different things. Um, uh, Sam, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the career treks that we offer um, right after the end of the spring semester? Sure, thanks Molly. Um, after the spring semester, we offer um, a career trek to New York, New York City um, for finance students and for marketing students. This is a great opportunity right after the end of the school year to start your networking so that you'll be ready in the late summer, early fall when those applications open, especially in the finance area. Um, there are other opportunities over the summer. Um, we also have been to Philadelphia, the Philadelphia area, and have done an evening networking reception for students to get involved in. And this is the time, the summer is the time where you, the student, should be networking with alumni that can help you in your job search. Folks that can do informational interviews with you, and the College of Business has resources set up so that we can help connect you with folks um, that we can do these sort of informational interviews with you, and a summertime is a great time to do that. Very good. Okay, um, the next question I think I'll probably get several of you to chime in on. Um, a good question from Rachel. Um, she's uh, in New Hampshire, and she wants to know what sets JMU's College of Business apart from other schools, and she wants to make sure, you know, find out if the out-of-state tuition is worth it. So who would like to go first here? I'll start yeah. off. Um, one of the uh, special things about JMU, and there are many special things that we can all talk about, is um, our very dedicated alumni base. Our alumni are dedicated to helping our students succeed. And so this is important because they're the ones who come back to campus and hire our students for internships, full-time entry-level positions, volunteer to be mentors to students, host us at companies when we do company visits. And so this alumni network, which is all over the country, um, concentrated mainly on the Eastern Seaboard, but if you had an interest of going to Silicon Valley, um, California, we've got a couple hundred alums who would jump at the chance to help you, you know, look for that um, great internship or full-time um, entry-level position. So we have a really special network out there that wants to take care of their own, and that sets us apart from a lot of other schools. Great. Um, Teresa, do you want to talk a little bit about um, our academic programs? Sure. We have many great programs. All of our majors are outstanding. One of the things that makes JMU distinct, I think, from many other colleges of business around the world is a course that we teach called CLB 300. It's a course that students take typically their first semester of their junior year. It's 12 credits. So it's four courses all built into one. Each class is marketing, management, operations and finance, each taught by a separate professor, but you take that, that class as one big cohort. So you're in the same four classes with everyone. And the instructors who teach those classes work very hard as a team to ensure that they're delivering an integrated experience to try and show you those connections um, across the different disciplines. Another thing that comes out of that class is a business plan. 
that students develop as part of a team. And usually the best business plans at the end of the semester get invited to participate in a great big competition that we have called the Jackson Rainey Business Plan Competition that's very similar to Shark Tank. And students have the opportunity to win some very nice scholarships as a result of that. So it's, it's a really, really great experience that I think you would enjoy as part of the JMU experience. Great, thanks. And um, I'm gonna add a little bit um, uh, from my perspective onto, um, onto what makes um, JMU worth it. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, Poets and Quants rated um, JMU uh, College of Business as being number one in the nation on um, a measure that uh, called return on investment. So what they did was they looked at the cost of attending JMU uh, and getting an undergraduate business degree and then the earning potential that those graduates have. And our students do exceptionally well once they enter the job market. They, we, it, um, they find really great jobs to start off with and then they progress very quickly in those jobs. Um, companies, um, a lot of the big companies um, have targeted JMU. Um, all four big four accounting firms have selected JMU as top 20 in the nation um, in terms of putting their uh, recruiting resources uh, in. And so that makes a big difference when um, those companies are here all the time. Um, this past fall, um, uh, we had one section of a um, management strategy course. This was their capstone class for the management majors. Um, and uh, IBM came in and offered jobs to 14 students in that one section. Uh, they weren't, they didn't all, I, I, um, IBM didn't get all of them because some of them had already accepted job offers elsewhere. Um, but uh, our students um, do very, very well. The accounting majors, um, our pass rate on the CPA exam is um, in the top 10 in the whole country. Um, almost all of our uh, accounting majors will have a job offer um, probably a year before they, uh, before they uh, uh, leave school. Uh, Emily and Austin, I'm going to have you all kind of chime in. We have a couple of other questions about the um, about internships and jobs. So Austin, will you share a little bit about your own personal experience with that? Oh, Austin, you're going to need no, to unmute. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. So um, I did after my first summer um, uh, year at JMU, I kind of stumbled into an internship at uh, my local country club. And then my sophomore year, I came back and um, kind of very typical story it was on on-campus recruiting, um, just saw a company and decided to go up and talk to them. Um, that ended up getting me an internship the next summer, which is normally very early for a college student. Um, and then the next year, so fall of my junior year, um, it was honestly very easy for me. There were tons of companies coming into the College of Business and kind of just crawling all over campus. Um, it was very easy to apply, very easy to interview, and then um, ended up just as an intern, um, having that landed in, I think, October um, of my junior year. And then senior year, again, um, you kind of just walk around the College of Business and companies are there and they want to talk to you and they want to hear from you. Um, I did one round of interviews on campus and then for most companies would go to their site for the next one. Um, and yeah, ended up with a job again in like October, or November. Um, so can't speak highly enough. There are a ton of resources. Um, I'd say I had very great outcomes from undergrad and I didn't even use all the uh, resources available. So um, that's my story. Yeah. Okay. And I noticed your EY vest on. So uh, you're, you're, you were a proud uh, new hire for, uh, for EY. Uh, Emily, what about your experience? Yeah, so Austin killed it in his first two years by getting internships that early. Um, that's not extremely typical, so no worries if you're stressed about that. But I had an externship this past summer, my sophomore year, with um, a company that ended up leading into an internship for this summer. So I, I honestly can't speak highly enough about JMU's ability to provide us opportunities to meet with employers, if that's through the career track or if that's through the career fair. Um, are just organizations on campus planning company visits. Um, so getting involved is really the key thing for um, finding opportunities like that. Um, 
yeah, so this summer I'll hopefully be doing my externship and I just encourage you guys to never. I think, I think she froze up a little bit. Okay, so um, I, I would like to point out that um, from our uh, most recent graduate poll, 95% uh, of um, our graduating seniors were either employed in graduate school or other uh, career related endeavors within six months of graduation. And I dare say that the other 5% were choosing to do something else. Um, so there are, there are plenty of, uh, of opportunities uh, in, the, in that regard uh, and lots and lots of support for you. Okay. Um, all right, so do we have any, any more questions coming in? Uh, let me just take a look. Oh, okay. So here's a question uh, from Stephen. It says, I heard you reapply to the business school after being admitted. What are the requirements to get into the business school? Uh, again, what percentage of students get in business school after reapplying? Okay, so you don't really like reapply. You, all you have to do is, um, I mean, there is a like a, a, a very short form that you fill in, uh, fill out saying that you want to keep progressing. Um, you just take those eight uh, business class and core business classes that Michelle was talking about earlier um, over your first three or four semesters of school uh, and complete calculus as well. Um, and then those eight uh, core business classes, you just need to earn a B minus average. So it's not a, an unrealistic hurdle that we, that we have in place, but we do want to make sure that students um, who have um, progressed into the major um, have some core um, business skills um, going in. So you take those classes, you're not competing with your, um, with your fellow classmates. So it really changes the culture um, of being a student at JMU um, in your freshman and sophomore year. You're much more collaborative. You're working with your classmates because you're not competing with them for a finite number of spaces. So um, I think on average, about 85% of the students that come in as business majors end up business majors. Um, some just choose to do something else because maybe they come to campus and they find something else that they love to do. Um, but it is much more common to, uh, to keep progressing um, than not. And when, frankly, when you get here as a freshman, we treat you as a member of the College of Business. We are not saying, well, you're not really in yet. There really is no distinction there. Um, but that's a, great, that's a great question. Okay, um, uh, there's some questions about um, AP uh, classes, um, like for um, economics, um, Michelle, do you want to just mention what the AP policy is? Uh, sure. And Austin might have something a little more to, to add to that as well. It's actually a very quick answer. Um, the answer is yes, JMU will accept your AP credit for micro and macro if you scored a four or a five on the AP exam. Austin, did you want to add anything extra there? Yeah, I just wanted to say that generally um, for econ, we normally recommend people to take those again um, because you can get a very different experience taking an econ course in college versus AP at high school. Um, but if you're planning on any other major, it should be fine. Okay, yeah, so that, that's good, good advice. So if you want to be an economics major, you're going to get more out of uh, taking the classes even if you have AP credit. But um, uh, but otherwise, if you're simply looking to um, get the credits, we do accept um, fours and fives on the AP exam. Okay. Um, oh, here's here's a question. Um, not let's see. We don't have anybody from finance or Cupin, but the question says, what are the big differences between finance and quantitative finance? Um, I can talk a little bit about that, um, but I. Um, I can, yeah. and, can you go ahead and talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, so quantitative finance, you follow a different track. So you don't do the normal uh, same prerequisites, same COP 300 course. It's really geared at people who are more into the math and programming side of finance. So a lot of people in QFIN want to go into um, like algorithmic trading jobs, forecasting jobs, um, just more of like the real nitty gritty um, of finance. That said, some of them just end up in those same finance jobs, but can perform at a little higher level if it's very analytical. Um, 
So the classes will be different. I think um, QFINS will take most of the classes that the finance majors take, but not the same electives. And then as a QFIN major, you also get a minor in math and a minor in econ. And I think there's only one concentration and it's risk analytics or something okay. risk. Um, actually, I, I just realized that Michelle is the advisor for quantitative oh. finance majors. So let me, let me turn things over to Michelle and let her um, kind of chime in. Michelle? Sure, sure. Um, quantitative finance is our smallest major in the College of Business. We only have about 75 students right now who major in what we call affectionately QFIN. Um, the QFIN program, it leads to a Bachelor of Science degree. So just as the title and degree um, indicate, you will be taking a lot of math and quantitative analytical type based courses. Um, QFIN, it closely uh, interlaps with finance, um, math, and economics. So as someone just stated, the QFIN major automatically incorporates a minor in economics and a minor in math. Um, many of our QFIN majors will actually double major in QFIN and in, in math. Typically, the jobs that the QFIN majors are looking towards are probably something maybe on Wall Street, maybe managing hedge fund accounts, um, investment banking. And Austin was correct. Um, there is a concentration in quantitative finance, and that is risk management. Okay, very good. All right. Um, I'm going to um, ask the students to chime back in a little bit and talk about um, building relationships with faculty. Uh, Emily? Yeah, I think that's a big part and a big benefit of being a part of GMU's. Is my connection okay? Yeah. Okay, my internet, my internet just freaked out again. Um, I think that's a big part of being involved in classes is getting to know your professors. They're there for you and they want to help you. And if you just go to one office hour, that's all it takes is um, showing that you care about the class and showing that you're interested they'll respond really well to it. Um, yeah, that's been my experience. And then if you ever have a question, all you have to do is go up and ask and you feel more comfortable about doing so too. So I would highly recommend your parents aren't, aren't joking around when they stay good office hours. It's a really good thing to do. Absolutely. Um, Teresa, do you wanna talk a little bit about how faculty um, and students interact with one another in the college? Is Teresa still there? Or did we lose her? We may have lost her. Okay, uh, I, I will frozen. speak a little bit about that um, because um, I teach accounting and uh, I have uh, really built some uh, strong relationships with a lot of my students over the years. And that has been the really the joy of my career is working with those um, uh, with those students one-on-one, -on -one, especially when they come uh, to get help uh, during office hours. Uh, but I think that you'll find that we have um, a faculty um, in the college and really across the university who love to teach. Um, they do some really excellent research, uh, but uh, faculty in the College of Business um, want to teach and they also have really rich um, real business experience that is, uh, that's really valuable. Okay. Molly, can you hear me again? Yes. No, oh, no, okay. You. If you don't mind, sorry, I, I was having a little bit of internet trouble there, but I just want to echo what everyone has said. The faculty in the College of Business, we take our teaching role very seriously. We enjoy having conversations with students before class, after class, in the hallways, in the elevators. We're very approachable and, and very eager to help. So again, I just want to reinforce to not be shy about reaching out to us coming to our office hours. It will help us get to know you. And the more we know about you, the more that we can bring opportunities your way. Great, great. Um, oh, I've got a question that asks about the Hart School and the College of Business uh, and how do they uh, work together? Um, the, the Hart School um, has two majors, uh, hospitality management and sport and recreation management, and they are an affiliate school for the College of Business. Uh, so they have a very, uh, you know, they have their own unique identity that they're really, really proud of. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, great student involvement in the Hart School. Um, they are under the umbrella of the College of Business, and so, for example, they, they 
graduate with the College of Business. Um, the Dean's Office in the College of Business also um, supports the student organizations in the Hart School. Um, we help finance um, activities that they do when they go to conferences and things like that. Um, all of the students in the Hart School automatically, part of, as part of their curriculum, earn a general business minor. So the Hart School students are in um, the College of Business a lot. Um, and a lot of them, you know, sometimes you'll see them pick up a minor in the College of Business as well. So um, if there's anybody out there that's interested in the Hart School, I um, really recommend that you reach out to, um, uh, to Mr. Marin, the uh, director, and uh, let yourself be known, and he would be really happy to talk to you. Okay, um, what companies have recently hired College of Business graduates from Brendan? Okay, well, it's it's almost too many to number or to name. Uh, I would say some of our really big um, hiring companies, um, Deloitte is one, PricewaterhouseCoopers, other, otherwise known as PwC. Um, IBM, I mentioned earlier, has been hiring lots and lots of students. Um, Accenture, Booz Allen. Um, I, I know I'm going to offend somebody out there if I don't include their company. Uh, <laughs> could I include a cut? Could I add some sure. to that, Molly? So we have many amazing companies that come and recruit on campus in all of our majors and disciplines. Molly just named a few. Um, we are a very big, we have a very big presence in the Washington DC market for students who are from Virginia. Um, Amazon hires our students, all the major consulting firms, Molly named a few of them, Booz Allen, Accenture. We have advertising agencies and marketing companies that hire our students. We have a lot of information technology jobs um, that are available to our students. Um, students go to tech job to go to tech jobs. We have people at Google. We have people at Salesforce. We have people at Facebook out in California. Um, so we really run the gamut from small business to large um, and all over the United States and the world. Um, students are um, working. Recent graduates and graduates are working. Um, if you want more specific information, we'd be happy to, um, you know, send that to you as well. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, some of the, our other panelists are, are chiming in on the chat. Um, so don't forget, uh, Capital One is another one, Goldman Sachs. Um, we, we do have a, quite a few students um, landing these really prestigious jobs on Wall Street um, that we're really proud of. And um, Amazon has been, um, has been hiring as fast as they possibly can uh, for their new HQ2 uh, up in Northern Virginia. So that's been, that's been great. Okay, well, gosh, half an hour, a little more than half an hour went by really, really fast. Uh, thank you um, to the, everybody that, um, that is viewing out there uh, for joining us today. Um, if we weren't able to get to your question during the panel, please leave your question under the comments section, um, whether you're in YouTube or in Facebook, and um, uh, somebody will get back to you about that. Um, you can also visit the Choices website for more information. And um, uh, you'll see the um, you'll see the link uh, on the on either YouTube or Facebook. Uh, and I would also like to thank my panelists for joining me today. It really has been a lot of fun. Um, I I miss everybody terribly, <laughs> and uh, I do hope that um, you all will reach out to us um, with any other questions that you might have. Um, let me give you my. Um, uh, email address. It's pretty easy um, to uh, to know. It's brown mg, like a brown mg car. Brown mg at jmu.edu, and um, I would love to hear from you. All right. Well, thank you, panelists, and thanks everybody for coming by this evening. Bye bye. <laughs>